grafting your own plants at home can certainly seem like a bit of a daunting prospect. And as far as gardening skills go, it's at the advanced level. But the processes and techniques involved are actually really easy to follow. The results are very rewarding, and most of all, it's a lot of fun. Grafting gives the home gardener some huge advantages. Trees can be grafted onto dwarfing or semi-dwarfing rootstock, meaning normally large trees never get to their full size. You can also graft multiple varieties onto the one tree. And in the case of fruit trees, this means loads more different fruit for a longer harvest. Late winter and early spring, as the sap starts to rise and the buds start to swell, is the perfect time to get out there and start grafting. So let's go give it a crack. You're going to need two main plant materials to graft. You're going to need rootstock and your scions. Your rootstock are the base that your plant grows on. These are usually selected for their adaptability to soil type, disease resistance and vigour of growth. I've got an M9 dwarfing apple here. Now the scions are basically cuttings of the tree you want to graft onto the rootstock. These are selected for their quality of fruit. I've gone with the good old Coxus orange pippin. You'll also need a sharp budding knife, some budding tape and a pair of secateurs. Matching your rootstock to your scion is critically important for successful grafting. Generally speaking, only plants of the same genus can be grafted onto each other. For example, oranges can be grafted onto lemons because they're both of the genus citrus. Another good tip is to make sure that your scion is about the same thickness as your rootstock. This will make your grafting easier and more successful. Now, just a word on the cambium layer. This is the green living tissue found just under the bark. Now, all grafting is, is trying to match up the green layer of your scion with the green layer of your rootstock. The more of this green tissue that you can match up together, the more successful your graft will be. The first grafting technique I want to show you is called whip and tongue. The advantage of this one is it forms a nice, neat, solid join. Also, there's plenty of surface area, which means that your graft should be more successful. Now, it's a little bit fiddly, but it's well worth the effort. Start by cutting your rootstock about 20 centimetres above the ground. Using a grafting knife, slice the rootstock stem to make a single wedge. Then make a downward cut in the middle of the wedge to create a tongue. Take the scion and do exactly the same thing. It's these two tongues that now slot neatly into one another. You can see how they hold onto each other snugly. That's the end result you're after. Using grafting tape, wrap the graft up nice and tight. This will trap in moisture and help prevent the cuts from drying out as the graft union is forming. Lastly, I like to shorten the scion down to a couple of buds. This will give the young tree a better shape. Now you'll know your graft has worked in a couple of weeks time when the scion starts to shoot. When this happens, remove the tape straight away. If you're not feeling terribly confident about your grafting, it can be a good idea to practice on some old sticks first. These can be willow canes, or in this case, old apple prunings. And that leads me on to my next grafting technique I wanna show you, which is the cleft or V graft. The good thing about this is it's one of the more simple techniques, so it's great for the beginner. It also allows you to graft scion of a small girth onto a large established rootstock. Grab your scion and make two sloping cuts about 2.5 to 3 centimetres long, so it forms a wedge at the base of the scion. And then make two corresponding cuts in the rootstock to form a V. Once that's done, just insert the scion, making sure the cambium layer is aligned on one side. Wrap it in budding tape and wait. 
The last grafting technique I want to show you is a simple tea bud graft. This is where you can graft multiple varieties onto one established tree. For example, this nectarine onto this peach. All you have to do is find yourself a nice strong bud, bring it over to your tree, find a place on your tree and make a tea cut. and then just peel it open a little bit, exposing that cambium. There we go. Then you just get your bud off your other tree and prepare that. Select your strong bud and then just gouge it out with your knife, making sure to get a lot of cambium. Now that your bud's prepared, just slot it gently into the tea. Then grab your budding tape and just wrap it up making sure not to cover the bud. So there you go. Grafting is easier than you thought it was. Get out there, get experimenting. It's fun and addictive, and it'll open up a whole new world of plant options for you, the home gardener. See you next time.